Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Then this past week, the biggest news on COVID was about its new mutation. I know many people are worrying about how it will affect vaccine effectiveness and if it is gonna be more deadly. So today, let's take a deeper look of what this mutation is and what are the implications. By the way, if you are new to the channel, I'm Dr. Han. I make science review content, update on the latest global health topic. I also like to share learning tips for students' academic and personal development. If these are your interest topic, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you have already subscribed, thank you very much for coming back for another week of COVID update. So without further ado, let's start today's topic. So like I said at the beginning, today we're going to talk about the mutation. This mutation has a specific name, B117. There's a lot of dot in between. Now, this video is going to be all that you need to know about this new mutations. First, a disclaimer, like always, my videos are my summary and interpretations of publicly available scientific information. This video does not serve as any advice on treatment, diagnosis, and prevention of any diseases. And if I mention any commercial companies in the video, I have no affiliations with them. So a little bit of the background, okay, that recently there has been a rapid surge of COVID cases in the UK and in many parts of the world. So people believe this newly discovered mutated strain was from England. It appears to be more infectious, about 50 to 70% more infectious, depending on what sources you are looking at. And it also does not appear to be more dangerous so far. So this video, we're going to look at how much the virus, okay, has changed in a year since its first discovery at the end of 2019. And what is this new mutations and what is the significance and their implications for diagnosis and for vaccines? So fact number one, how much has changed in a year? All right. So as of December 2020, there have been more than 1,700 different amino acid changes identified in the spike protein of the virus. Now here is the figure of the virus and you look at the spike there, this is the spike protein. So there has been more than 1700 different amino acid changes. Now there are also other mutations happened that did not change the amino acid. Now some of the notable mutations include this first one, D614G. Now this mutation was not present when the virus was first first emerge, but now it just appears in all strains now. It associated with more moderate effect on SARS-CoV-2's transmissibility. I have a video produced in June, okay, talk about this mutation, so you can go check it out with the link down in the description box and also the link up above. Now there are other more notable mutations, but today we are going to focus on this N501 and 6970 deletions. So what is this new mutation all about? Now this new variant, we have the name B117. It also has other name. I put it in the parentheses there. It has been shown to increase in the findings since November 2020. This variant have 17 mutations, including 14 replacements and three deletions of amino acids in the spike protein. So there's 14 different uh, changes, okay, in the muta in the amino acids and also they lose three amino acids compared to the original one. Some of the noteworthy changes are the one that we talked about, the N501 and the 6917 deletions, double deletions. Okay, so what is significance about this mutations? Okay, first let's look at the N501Y. Okay, it enhances the ACE2 binding affinity, so it binds tighter. Okay, so here are the two figures. Okay, it's one of the is the scientific uh, rendering of the protein structure, noting pointing out, hey, 501 is at the tip of this uh, spike protein. It represents the receptor binding domain or motif where it interacts with the uh, angiotensin 2 receptor on the or human cells, which is the site of entry, uh, how this virus attack us. Okay, now there's a mutation happening there and makes it bind tighter to our ACE2 receptor. It also shown to escape some monoclonal antibody bindings. Now we'll come back to these antibody bindings uh, at a later point. Okay, uh, keep that thought in mind. And the second 
mutation is the 6970 double deletion. So here is the figure. It happens really kind of in the middle of the spike protein uh, if you look at it in the 3D rendering. Now, it, this has shown to escape some immune responses in immunocompromised patients and it caused some diagnostic failures in some assays. So let's look deeper. What are the implications for diagnosis for this mutations? Okay. Now the mutated genes can affect the target for PCR amplification. Here is a diagram illustrating how uh, the virus gene are being amplified in the PCR machines, and you basically get a large readout. Now again, there is a previous uh, video that I produced talk about diagnosis. You can check that out in the links above and in the description box. Now this changes in the gene cause some drop out okay in the S gene PCR target in some of the commercial kit for example the thermo fisher tech path uh, commercial kit okay that however the other targets other PCR targets still works in the kit so overall the test is not compromised okay it may not show as much amplified gene but overall it is still okay now, what are the implications for treatment and vaccines? I think that is most important. Now, I talked about it compromised some of the monoclonal antibody effectiveness. What does monoclonal antibody mean? It means by only binding to one region of the receptor binding domain. Here is a figure illustrating how it will affect. Now, here is one antibody here. Now, if the amino acid changes, okay, it will make the antibody bind less effective, okay? This is one type of antibody. But we have different antibodies. The other type is called polyclonal antibodies, which means that you give uh, more than one type of antibodies that can bind to more than one region. So here I'm showing you the green ones binding to another part of the spike protein. So because you have more binding part or more binding site, it will have a less likely uh, chance to lose effectiveness overall. Now, what about vaccines? Okay, both mRNA vaccines and adenoviral vi vectors, these vaccines, okay, induce polyclonal antibodies productions in the human body. So we will learn to produce more than one type of antibodies that can bind to multiple sites of the spike protein. So you get more chance to interact, so you have less likelihood to lose effectiveness overall. So what is the take-home message here? Okay, there have been more than 1,700 of amino acid changes have observed in the spike protein since last year. Now the new N501Y and the 6970 double deletions have increased in the populations, in the viral populations, and no evidence show that these mutants are more deadly so far. The new mutations bind stronger to the ACE2 receptors and may evade some people. PCR test. Currently, there are no evidence showing that the mutations can evade polyclonal antibodies. Okay, again, polyclonal means targeting multiple areas of the spike protein. Now, to learn more, here are the sources. One of the main documents that I read about was a document released from the COVID-19 Genomic UK Consortium. Okay, there are two links. One of the links didn't work very well for some reason, but it is the same document. So there's are the two PDF link and also look at the US. CDC report on this new variant. Okay, you can check it out and find out more about these two mutations. So I hope this video have given you a better understanding of this mutation. Now that is all for this week's COVID-19 update and I'll see you again next Sunday and stay healthy and safe. Bye.